Imagination is such a powerful thing. The imagination can change the world because the imagination creates new ideas and new ideas can change the world and it takes the imagination to have a new idea. Now, the imagination proposes ways of achieving our goals. Let's say that you're confronted with a problem at work or you know, just something at all. The imagination becomes a generator of solutions for you. If you have a problem, you begin to think about, how can I solve this thing? You begin to think about it, okay, should I do this, should I do this? Just think about it, think about it until you have several ideas or one idea. Let's take an everyday example. You are in church, or you are in school, or you are at work, and you see that fine girl, for the guys, you know what I'm talking about. You see that fine girl, or even ladies, you see a guy, you want him to notice you, you can't go and say hi, but you want him to take Take notice of the fact that you're there so he can come and talk to you. You know, you begin to imagine ways of making that happen, of bringing that about. What's the best thing I can say? What's the best thing I can do? Should I bump into her and scatter her books on the floor or something? Just, you know, just make it happen. Now, you have several ideas, and even if all of them don't work, the one that does work is all you need. My journey with Cool FM started off as a crazy idea I had. While I was working with Radio Bielsa in Bielsa State, I was in my room one day like that. And uh, while I was in school, actually, while I was uh, studying mass communication in school, I was going somewhere with my dad in the car. And then we tuned uh, to Cool FM at the time. It was the morning show. And, um, you know, I heard this person on the radio and it sounded so good. It sounded so fun. It sounded, it sounded fantastic. And I said to myself, oh, I never wanted to do radio. I felt that broadcasters were broke and we are. But I said to myself, if, I, if I'm ever going to do radio, you know, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. This is the station I'd like to work with. Because they, 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 they have a way of making fun tangible, you know. So, um, while I was in, in Bayelsa, working where I said I'll never work with the radio station, or the broadcaster, I said to myself, See, you said you wanted to work with Cool FM. Why are you here? What are you doing here? Okay, fine. Let's get an audition with Cool FM. How do you do it? How do you make yourself stand out from the crowd? Because I'm sure there are going to be auditions pouring in all the time and all the time. And I said to myself, what's the one thing you can do to stand out from that crowd? And then I went to their website, Cool FM website. There was no recruitment announcement, nothing. But there was uh, their email address there, info at coolfm.us. So um, I took out my phone. I was using a Blackberry then. Most of us have Blackberry phones, but we don't know most of the other functions. All we know is Facebook and Twitter and BBM. So um, I, I took out that phone, I went to the voice recorder, and I recorded myself in my room with all the sounds, making a presentation, and then I read a script, and then I sent that voice note as an attachment to info at coolfm.us. Now, before I did that thing, there were, there were several voices in my head. Ah, what did they talk? This, they won't hear it now. No one goes there at all. Even they read it. What makes it different from the rest? There, was, there, there, was a lot of vo there, were, there were a lot of voices in my head doubting that action I was about to take. But I said to myself, what if it does work? And then I sent that voice note and I forgot about it. Like weeks later, while I was with my former boss and uh, we were planning my program for the next day, um, I got a text message from my boss here, Mr. Tommy Bolladay. Mr. Tommy sent me a text and he says, um, Hi Sandra, I've been trying to reach you. This network's going to be a pain, man. You can just steal your shine. I've been trying to reach you. Can you please um, call me as soon as you can? Your number is not connecting. I'm the head of station. Who has a VIA info? I screamed in front of my, my, my boss then. And my boss was like, What is this? You cannot admit that he's about to lose one of his best hands, no. He said nothing. He said, okay. So I give you big one eye like that. So long story short, I had a second edition, a third one, and here I am today, one of, with the job I dreamed of having at some point in my life. It started with my imagination. It started with me thinking about what happened, how this goal I've set for myself, how can I achieve it? Now, as well as suggesting new means to a pre-giving goal, your imagination may also suggest new goals to aim at. In my case, it helped me to discover a way to get a job I wanted to get. But for you, it can give you an entirely new idea. An entirely new idea that can change the world. Ted, someone gave that as an instance. Ted started someone's entirely new idea. Just somewhere we can come and share ideas that can change the world. 
So if, if for instance, um, someone thinks about a society where everyone can afford basic health care, what am I be saying? The flying machine. Now, before Sir George Cayley's glider, there's something called a glider. Before Sir George Cayley invented a glider, or before the Wright brothers invented the air airplane, Leonardo da Vinci, how many of us have seen the Mona Lisa painting, or know the Mona Lisa painting? Show of hands. Okay, good. Quite a good number of us. Now, Leonardo da Vinci was a painter, and um, I'm going to show you something he invented. One day when he was waiting for Mona Lisa, now this is my own story, I don't know if it's good. While he was waiting for Mona Lisa, he said uh, to himself, too much, he's wasting too much time. Oh, I wish you could fly here instead of maybe use a horse or use a ship. I, I would have painted that a long time ago. You know, and then he said to himself, he, he said, while he was doing that, he started to notice the birds. He became fascinated by the birds. He became fascinated by the fact that they could fly. They could just get up, spread their wings, and fly. And so he invented that. It's called a flying machine. It's called an ornithopter. That started the process for all of the other things that led to the aeroplane that you and I enjoy today. Someone said while uh, the MC was trying to get interactive that it's a, it's a ripple effect. You know, you start the process and it continues and continues and continues. It doesn't end with you. And that's how that started. Someone's imagination. That's how it started. It started with Leonardo da Vinci. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. You need to remember that all the time. Remind yourself of all of that. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. This is a famous quote from Napoleon Hill. How many of us have seen or read that book, Think and Grow Rich? Have you seen it? Have you read it? Think and Grow Rich was written in that book. Napoleon Hill was the author. That book was published in 1937. And Napoleon Hill reminds me of another Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte is another smallie like myself. And Napoleon imagined a Europe, a world, where the French was dominant instead of dominated. Now, because he had that in his mind, he started the process of creating a France that was dominant in Europe instead of dominated in Europe. Yes, he had a lot of wars. Yes, a lot of bad things happened as a result. But today, he is an icon in history. I hear he's even studied in some military schools when it comes to warfare and things like that. It started with Napoleon. Main point is, he used his imagination, which birthed an idea, and actions that in turn changed the world. It's not enough to just dream beautiful dreams. It's not enough to get an idea from all of those dreams. You also need to act on it. Now, the imagination is not all good news. It has some bad parts of it. Let's talk about Hitler. The imagination itself has some dark sides. World War II started partly because Hitler imagined a Euro that was dominated by Nazi Germany. He imagined a world where the Nazi Germans were dominant. He also imagined genocide on an industrial scale. Look at that picture, very sad. All you see, skulls and bones. That is as a result of someone's imagination as well. So it has a dark side. Hitler's imagination changed the world. It started with him. The imagination constitutes both opportunities and danger. Like every good thing, there's a bad side. Imagination enables doctors to find new, new cures to diseases. And it also enables people who torture people, torturers, to invent new ways to make you feel more pain. So in that respect, imagination is like any other means to knowledge. All knowledge has the potential to be used for both good and bad ends. For instance, the imagination helps us to gain knowledge of the pleasure or pain or happiness or misery that the actions that we choose between would probably cause in other people. If you cannot vividly imagine the pain and suffering of someone. You would not know what it means to be in that person's shoes. Quite often in Nigeria, we use that term, 
Put yourself in my shoes now. Put yourself in my shoes now. How many times do we actually do that? Put ourselves in each other's shoes. The more vividly you imagine it, the more likely it is to move you. Now, let's say, for instance, that you don't picture the suffering of our brothers and sisters in the Northeast. You know, those who are being terrorized right now by the terrorists in the Northeast. You will say, if you don't vividly imagine how they feel, you say to yourself, now them, now them, they kill themselves, Jarelu, tell me they die again. You say that to yourself. If you don't imagine the hunger and suffering in a country like, say, Sudan, you'll be less likely to contribute money to a charity that helps to alleviate that suffering or hunger. Every day you open the page of a newspaper, you see rape this, rape that, 50 year old, 16 year old, rape, rape, rape. Do you think that if that man or that woman, because I've heard that some men, some men also get raped by women, if, do you think that if that man or that woman said to himself, what if it were me? As a young man, I say no to a young man who's trying to get to know me in the biblical sense. And I say to that man, no, I don't want, I'm a man. And I say to that man, no, I don't want, and that man forces himself on me. Picture it. I want you to think about it. Picture it. Try to feel what that person is feeling. That girl that you're forcing, that boy that you're forcing. Think about it. I don't think anyone that vividly imagines how their actions affect another person would still go ahead and perpetrate that act. I think, I think in fact, that it's because we don't imagine it. We stop ourselves from thinking about what if not me. We stop ourselves from doing that. And that is why there's so much terrible things going on in the world today. Now, don't get me wrong, though. Some people actually imagine it and then go ahead and do it. Those are who they call sadists. They're evil. All right. The problem with Nigerian youth, young people, not just Nigeria, but we're talking about Nigeria today. So the problem with young people, especially here in Nigeria, is we just seem content to talk and talk and talk. Oh, the government, oh, the people are, or tweet and BBM and uh, Facebook and hashtag things. We don't want to do anything to change the things that are going wrong. Many of us don't like what we see around us. The last thing we ever do is change it. If you do not want the things you see around you, don't just watch and hope it will change. It is well. God said it is well. Don't do that. There must be a work plan that will determine what you and you are going to do to change it. My mother, at the age of 18, um, took an aptitude test for one of the banks in Nigeria. Now, right from a very young age, she always wanted to be a banker. In those days, being a banker was the only thing. It's not now that they're hungry. So, <laughs> in those days, you know, when you were a banker, it was a prestigious job, you know, you were like fly and things, you know. So she wanted to be a banker, she loved the way they carried themselves, she loved the fact that they were, they were clean and posh and nice, you know, so she wanted to be a banker. And at 18, immediately after her O level, she uh, took an aptitude test to get a, a job with a bank and she passed in flying colors. But you know, Niger now, if you don't get Godfather and you don't get, you know, from the human village, you don't get it. So she could have said to herself, eh, now the wait is there, let me go and rest. If she had done that, she probably wouldn't have been a banker for the number of years that she has been a banker. But she said to herself, no, I'm not going to take this. I passed, I saw my results, I did good. So here's what she did she thought about it, she devised a plan. And she went to their headquarters in Enugu at the time. And then she walked into the, the office with the security guards. And the security guards were like, Madam, how, how may I help you? Now, let me tell you about my mother. My mother, at 18, was much tinier than I am right now. And I'm in my 20s. She was much tinier than I am. She was really small, you know. She, they used call her mosquito legs. So at 18, she was tiny. So she got to the security gate, and they told her, what are you doing? She said, I have an appointment with yoga. It was a lie. So she said, okay, no, I'm not telling you to lie, but what will happen? So, you know, she, she walked past and went into the house and entered into the office, and then she's sitting down at the reception, and uh, the receptionist says, okay, don't worry, I'll tell her that you're around. 
Now she used a split second while the receptionist was distracted. She walked into the main boss's office. My mother was tiny. And the boss turned around and looked at her. Young girl, boy. And then she first goes, oh, sir, how are you? Good afternoon, sir. I like your shoes. They're so fine. Your shirt is so fine. So she compliments the guy. The guy relaxes a bit. And then she says, what do you think is this girl? This tiny little girl. And then my mom says, uh, sir, um, I have a, a little complaint. And then the, 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 the man says, what is it, young girl? And then she tells her story. And the man says, what? Did you pass? Yes. Did you do well? You're sure? Yes. And the man picks his phone, calls the branch, uh, corroborates her story, sends her back for a second uh, interview, and then she got her job. Most Nigerians will say, ah, oh, it's my uncle in the village that is doing me. Let me go and see. You know? But she didn't, she didn't sit, want to sit down and wait for manna to fall from heaven. She took a decision. She made a choice. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. You need to create a work plan to achieve that aim. You cannot just sit down and hope that things will work out for you. We have such an amazing power of creativity inside of us to change the way things work around us. It's only lazy people that will go about and say, that's, that's the way it's been working, that's the way it's always going to work. Uh, let me just relax. Marianne Williamson said, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? Who am I to be gorgeous? Who am I to be talented? Who am I to be fabulous? The question is, who are you not to be? Before you think too far, about any small thing to change, let me help you by saying that your habits should be the first thing. Change what you think about, change what you talk about. Change the things that get your attention before you plan to change a nation. If you are the person who, the fact that Kim Kardashian is naked again, that's what makes your day go well, good luck changing your nation. If you are the person who, the fact that Total DK is smoking again, Oh well, good luck changing your nation. If you are the person that says to yourself, I don't like that children who should be in school are out on the streets hawking, then yes, you are on your way to changing your nation. If you are the person that says to yourself, I don't like the fact that there are so many young girls who are standing on the roads, plying their, their body as a means of living, of livelihood, and I need to change that then yes, you are on your way to changing a nation. Do you want your country to change? Start by changing the small things around you. And don't tell yourself you're too young. We're here today because of Ebenezer Wikina and his friends, and they're pretty young people. We have an eight-year-old who's here, and who's going to talk to us, and I cannot wait to hear what she's, I'm intimidated by her. <laughs> you know? And, and, and she's starting at that age, she's just eight. You have Z uh, Zuriel, one of uh, Ebenezer's girlfriends. <laughs> you have Malala. All these are young people, and they're changing the world. So age is not, age is not your excuse anymore. Not, not today, not in the 21st century. If you imagine a world without hate, the next time you are in a Brumo Masi market, and you hear, Ole, tip, 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 tip. Will you pick up a stone? Or will you whip out your phone? These days it's a phone. You know, take a video, hashtag, tip in room master. <laughs> will you do that? Or would you find yourself a law enforcement guy and bring that person to come and do their duty? Now, let me tell you something. You have done your part. Whether or not the law enforcement guy you brought to do their own part goes ahead and does their job or does something else entirely, you have started the process. You did not walk past, it's not my business. And you walk past. You didn't say to yourself, it's not my problem. If you imagine a society where nepotism is not the order of the day, tribalism is not the order of the day, a country where individuals are taking advantage of their capabilities, individuals are dealt with based on only, on, based on only what they are capable of doing, if you think about that, 
If you want that, it starts with you. It does. If you take anything at all from all the things I've said today, if you take one thing, something at all, let it be this. Observe. Ask yourself that question, what needs changing? You don't need to go too big. Start from your, where, where do you stay? Choba. Start from Choba. What needs changing in Choba? You're a mass communication student in your classroom. What needs changing in that class? Ask yourself, what needs doing? You need to observe and discover what needs changing, and then you start working on making sure that it does in fact change. I'm standing before you today because someone said to themselves, killing of twins is a terrible thing, and I don't think that should continue. Now, how do I make it stop? How do I make it stop? How do I make sure that this doesn't happen anymore? And then they started the process, and today I can have my own children, as many twins as I want. Because someone said, no, enough is enough. Think about how you can change things. Get out of that mind frame of na government business, na dem sabi, na dem sabi. Na you sabi. It's your problem, it's your business. If you watch cartoons, you see that moment in, in, uh, in the movies where you have that ding, the light bulb moment, you know, that yellow bulb that comes on in your head when you're thinking about what to do. When you sit down and start to imagine how you can change things, an idea or several will come. What can making that idea a reality? Don't think about what if it doesn't work. All you need is the one idea that does work. Because at the end of the day, it starts with you. Thank you very much.